Guangzhou, China's capital of Guangdong and one of China's most important first tier cities. One could say the peak of southern Chinese sophistication, infrastructure, and progress. What do the citizens of Guangzhou say when an African American ex NBA player exits his bus after an official Chinese Basketball Association game? <laughs> Just so you understand, the target of this abuse was ex-NBA player Clarence Sonny Weems. He was in the past drafted for the Chicago Bulls and played for the Denver Nuggets as well as many others before taking a position in the Guangdong Southern Tigers of the CBA, the Chinese Basketball Association. I certainly hope someone, somewhere, is taking a knee in order to protest the systemic racism in Chinese society. Probably not though, as like other NBA players, they'll just end up excusing this disgusting racist behavior and instead end up apologizing for China's brutal regime instead. Oh, and it gets deeper than this. But let's first talk about spies. So what does this have to do with spies in the United Kingdom? Well, let me tell you a little anecdote. Recently, it has been revealed by MI5, they've known for a long time, but they finally revealed that uh, influence has been coming in from Beijing into the UK Parliament via a certain person who's been very influential, who's been donating hundreds of thousands of pounds in order to gain and curry favour for the CCP in many different political spheres. I understand that Mr Speaker has been contacted by MI5 and is now warning members of Parliament that there has been a, an agent of the Chinese government active here in Parliament. Is it possible that we will have a statement from the Speaker, uh, from the Chair, about the risks? I am one of those who has done a lot to try and help fleeing Hong Kong Chinese, fleeing the communist regime here in the UK. We have names and numbers of people. And that leaves me worrying that some of these have been accessed by such an individual. These would be their lives and their families at risk, and I am deeply concerned. So when this hit the news and hit the websites and whatever, a friend of mine was sitting with a colleague, and they were both reading this. And the colleague, the first thing the colleague said when they read this news was not, oh no, this is terrible, there's spies influencing the politics in the UK. The CCP's influence is so entrenched that it puts Chinese dissidents and Chinese citizens abroad at stake because now they have their claws in the local governments. No, none of this. You know what they said? They said, oh no, this is terrible. This is just going to create more racism against Chinese people in the UK. You see how well the CCP and the Chinese Communist Party has managed to manipulate this whole race card and this whole racism thing. They've got it to a point where people would rather not know about, rather excuse espionage, industrial theft, IP theft, uh, lots of bad dealings by the CCP in foreign countries, including kidnapping, etc., etc. They'd rather turn a blind eye because they're afraid of the word racism. They're afraid of being racist. They're afraid of somehow talking about or shining a spotlight on these bad actions will result in racism. It's kind of rich considering how much the Chinese government harbors, encourages, and allows racism within the walls of China. Hey, why, why can't we go in? Why, cannot, why can't we go in? You're not allowed into our supermarket. You're not allowed into our hairdresser, you know, our barbershop. Because they don't like black people in. Oh, he just said it in Chinese. We don't like black My boss told me not to let black He said it. My family is inside eating lunch because they are Chinese. They can eat outside. But now I, I need to stay outside because I'm a foreigner. See, maybe you can give me a ball. First, I was sitting 
outside next to the trash because they didn't let me inside but now they just gave me a chair outside so I can sit so my husband is giving me food <laughs> thank you so the um, police are coming to get me to take me to a hotel because I'm African I've been in China I have been in China the whole time this virus has happened I have not left I've been staying in my apartment, I have been, the police have come twice, they've given me tests, I've been tested negative, now all the Africans in Zhuhai are going to hotels. The Chinese state media and government constantly use racism as a way to gain political clout. They scream racism whenever they're caught out doing terrible things. They cry racism when legitimate concerns about IP theft, infiltration and covert spying etc. have the spotlight shone on them. In fact, they cry racism when they themselves are exerting pressure on universities overseas that care deeply about Chinese issues such as Tibet and Xinjiang. The list goes on. I'm here to point out how absurd this whole situation is. A government that condones and fosters widespread xenophobia and racism within the borders of China constantly cries victim. China is one of the most ethnocentric countries and societies in the world. You're either Han Chinese or you're the enemy. Think I'm exaggerating? Let's take a look at a rather common mindset that can be found throughout China. You gotta understand that Yang Laji is like a seriously, seriously bad slur. I mean, it translates to foreign garbage or foreign trash, but actually it's kind of like a filthy foreigner. It's even worse than that. If you can think of a racial slur that can be used against any ethnic minority, it kind of falls in that same category. So this is not a very polite guy here. 虽然我国的法律婚姻自由，但是没有哪一条法律或者某一个人支持提倡你去嫁给外国人。You know what's funny about this is that uh, the laws in China up until sometime in the 80s didn't allow foreigners to marry Chinese nationals. Actually, that was in the law. Imagine that. Hmm. Just imagine in America or the UK or something, they said, sorry, um, you're Indian, you're not allowed to marry a, a British man or a British woman. Anyway, that's what China was like very recently. In fact, still in my lifetime. And here's the thing. The guy says there's no law or person that uh, encourages you to marry a foreigner. But you know what? There are plenty of people that discourage you to marry foreigners. I'll tell you that, including this guy, obviously. You know, this is a problem. Imagine you thought you're the greatest and that uh, you need nothing and uh, you're, you're just, you're the best in the world. Well, you see, that's the problem. You never are. It's kind of like that dumb person with a low IQ who thinks he's the smartest person in the room. This is the problem. China lacks a lot. Okay, I'm just saying this right now, just like every other country lacks a lot. So you can't just go out there and say that China's amazing and lacks nothing. But here's, here's the thing. He's like, yeah, there are many excellent single men. And of course, there are many excellent single men in China. But you see, he's blaming the wrong people here. He somehow, as you're going to get through this, thinks that uh, there are these, there's this like troop or this, this, I don't know, invasion of foreigners coming to China to steal the women. You know, the ridiculous thing is that uh, I think the latest census was that there were around about 850,000 foreigners living in China. Fair enough, but what people don't seem to realize is that of those 850 odd thousand foreigners, the majority of them are Asians, you know people from Japan, Korea, Chinese people that just have foreign passports or foreign nationalities. The actual amount of foreign foreigners, are the, the way they really are, are distinguished in China, in other words, different color skin and looking different, are actually fairly small. 
，你们偏偏喜欢上了白狗子、黑种人。I mean, um, don't know why you have to call us white dogs and well, the N word. It's not very nice of you, mate. I mean, I don't call you any funny racial slurs, do I? 甚至还有些喜欢倭寇小日本。You know the Shao Rubin that they say it is a it's it's a slur, okay? It's the same as saying the N word or whatever, except that's what they use when they talk about Japanese people. They call them Shao Rubin Guiz, which just means little Japanese ghost, but it's a very derogatory term. You got to wonder why this guy. I mean, he's so charming. He goes around calling people white dogs, the N word,、uh, little Japanese ghosts. He's full of so much hatred and xenophobia and. You know what? You have to also understand that this is so encouraged in China by the state media and so on that you can't really blame the guy at the end of the day. This is very common, and like I said, this mindset is a lot more common than you might think. I come across it every day in the comment section of my videos. I used to come across it very often when out drinking with friends in China. My Chinese friends would speak about black people in this way. They would speak about、uh, Japanese people in this way all the time, and I'm not talking about. One little group of Chinese friends. I'm talking about random people that I met around the entire country, and you see the same stuff on state TV. We had a、um, we had a company performance. I remember、uh, when I was working in、uh, you know this one training center, and they made this whole thing about little Japanese ghosts and how stupid they are and so on. It's so in, so much a part of society. This this kind of racism and xenophobia. It's not even funny. Now let's continue with this guy's little speech. 这是什么？杂交出来的就是混血儿。更可怕的就是杂交出来的是狼儿子，我们的仇人。I mean, you see that that right there gives you a lot of insight into the way society has been shaped by the CCP. Anyone who's not, you know, blood Chinese, is an enemy. I mean, you don't really need more proof than that, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. This man, what he's saying is despicable, but it's not uncommon. I know it's not uncommon because I've heard it before. The difference is usually when you're sitting around having drinks and everyone's drunk and you're being spoken to. And I'm not talking about like people that I know very well, just random people you bump into. These kind of things come up in conversation quite often, but they'll exclude you. So they'll say the the N word and they'll talk about Indian people, they'll talk about Japanese people, whatever, in a very derogatory way. But because you're in the the group, they'll be like, "Oh, but you you Ingwaran or you Megwaran or whoever you are, you're fine." But these others, obviously, when you're not in the conversation, then they'll say that、uh, it's the same for you. This is not a lie. From the long term, it is just to make us more dangerous. 给那些洋垃圾繁衍后代。I mean, just imagine saying that to someone. Oh, you're marrying a foreigner, so what you're doing is you're increasing the amount of enemies,、um, and you're increasing the descendants of foreign trash, which is what he said. Of course, I could translate it、uh, in a more colloquial, colloquial way. The way he really means it, it would sound a lot more disgusting and harsh. But this is really a mindset that we have to be. Aware of, we have to understand that this exists in China to a large extent. And again, it's not everybody, but there's a large amount of people like this evil uncle out there have this mindset. So, I hope to get to this video of Chinese girls, to be more careful. Remember, your heart is always filled with Chinese blood. Your ancestors, your fathers, your mothers are always descendants of Yang dynasty. 好自为之吧，为中国人长点脸吧。Right, this does not only apply to foreigners, by the way. This applies to Chinese ethnic minorities as well, because you can see what he's saying there. You know, you have the blood of the Yellow Emperor in you. You know, etc., etc. This does not include Uyghurs, for instance, or Tibetans, or other ethnic minorities, because this only. Him in his mind and in this particular mindset, only 
is talking about the Han Chinese people, the majority. This is some serious racial superiority bullshit. This is Nazi stuff over here, okay? This is the Third Reich. This is, uh, you know, Aryans. This is that kind of mindset. The thing that he doesn't seem to understand is that the Han Chinese are actually quite a mix of various different ethnicities, and they've just been kind of labeled all together. He's living a lie, unfortunately, this guy. I mean, he's such an incredible specimen of a human being, isn't he? Look at how, how amazing he is. They definitely need to, um, you know, uh, preserve this bloodline, I'll tell you that much. Now, of course, this isn't how everybody thinks, but a large portion of the population do think this way. I know this because I've had conversations with the same types of people in China during the 14 years I lived there. Many, many, many people have spoken to me in this way or revealed that this is the way they feel. And of course, the fact that this video went viral and was so widely spread around the internet in China just attests to the fact that it's a rather accepted way of thinking. On top of that, the lack of condemnation for this kind of video, the absent apologies, and of course, society not holding somebody like this to task, again, shows you that it's condoned, especially by the government. Because you know the Chinese government, they can censor whatever they want. They can stop people from having whatever opinion they don't like, but they never stop these kinds of racist videos. They never reprimand anybody who puts out videos like this, and they never ever cancel or get an apology from anyone who's overtly racist the way those basketball fans were and the way that this middle-aged hmm, I don't want to call him a gentleman this middle-aged uncle is Don't ever think that you will be a part of that iron gate of Chinese people that the foreign enemies will bash their heads against and bloody themselves on. Because if you're not Han Chinese, you will not be part of that so-called iron gate that Xi Jinping talks about. There is some serious racial superiority and exclusionary nonsense going on in China. You can see it when the xenophobia ramps up. Whenever there's an international incident, whenever there's problems at home and they have to blame foreigners, China has no place in this world calling out other countries for their racism. In fact, it's about time China's held to the same standards as we hold the UK, the USA, Australia, etc, etc. For the longest time, this state-condoned racism and xenophobia has been given a free pass. But the next time we see an article coming out of China's state media claiming racism or that it's racist to call out China for all of its IP theft, all of its espionage, all of its meddling, all of its nonsense, all of its cover-ups, all of its bullshit lies, all of the things that they for some reason or other say it's racist to talk about, you know, for instance, it's racist to stop flights coming out of Wuhan, which is the epicenter of this new pandemic. although. Somehow, it's not racist for China to disallow and block any flights going into China now. See what I'm saying? It's time for us to call that out. And it's time for us to start calling out China's racism. Because as far as modern superpowers go, the CCP-led China and the society which it fosters that allows this racism and xenophobia to grow and in fact encourages such xenophobia and racism all the time. China right now is the most racist country in the world. A quick note before we sign off here. Of course, it's absurd to think that all Chinese people are racist. I'm talking about what the CCP encourages. I'm talking about what the CCP wants. They want the xenophobia. They, they love it. They use it as a tool. Of course, you get reasonable people. You get people that don't want any part of that. But because of the brainwashed education and the way people are brought up in China and the constant barrage of the news and the media from the state, it's really difficult not to become at least slightly xenophobic and racist when you live in China. Anyway guys, unlike those basketball fans and that evil uncle, stay awesome. <laughs>